So today I figured we'd take a look at the Fluke 87V. Now when you're talking to a lot of people about multimeters, especially high-end multimeters, the 87V or 87.5, you can say it either way, is what comes to mind for a lot of people as the multimeter for electronics. Now, the funny thing about the 87.5 is that it is not technically an electronics multimeter. It can be used for that, but it is actually an industrial multimeter. And we'll go into that a little bit more later on. But to start, this particular meter, I was actually really fortunate. And I found it used on eBay, as I do with just about every meter that I own. And I only paid 100 bucks for it. Um, I never got the story behind it. I never bothered to ask. But it was on eBay for 100 bucks, And I couldn't buy it quick enough. Normally... Finding these meters used for 200 bucks, 250 bucks is a rarity, and I managed to find this one for just a hundred. So I was very, very lucky in that. Now, I did actually get it, it was used, but it was in like new condition. I mean, the little dirt you see on it is actually for me using it in the field, but it came with the box and everything in it. And what you'll normally get in the box is your manual, and it'll come with these kind of standard fluke leads. These are the TL75s with the um, Class 4 little probe covers on them. You'll also get the AC175 alligator clips. These are really handy. And this is the 80BK fluke thermocouple. This is probably, in my opinion, the best K-type thermocouple that will come with a multimeter. It's really, it's got, it's flexible, but it's still actually kind of stiff. So, you know, it's just maneuverable enough to get what you need done. It's got a really good feeling sheath on it. I mean, it, it just, it's not that kind of some of them have, a lot of them have cloth, like, um, these two, and they're not really cloth, they're temperature-resistant insulation, but I just don't, I, I'm not a fan of this type. The Fluke really did it right whenever they went with this. Now, I did go ahead and actually upgrade mine to use the... TL220 sugar grip probes. Uh, these are the industrial probes and the leads. I believe these leads are five feet long, which is actually a little long for bench work, but for field use, they're awesome. But I like it because they're really, really good, flexible probes, and you can put a whole bunch of different tips on them. So you can you grab, you know, your alligator clips that comes with some of these and and your little automotive back probes. There's just a lot of different things you can put on these. And I just find that it's better to use these in general for this meter. So if you purchase one, this is something to think about is to get a set of these leads. Now for the meter itself, a couple of the specs on it. I'll, uh, I will go ahead and link in the... Uh, fluke website with their specs on it so you can get as deep into it as you want but just in general for electronics purposes your DC accuracy is going to be your most accurate range and what you're most worried about and it's 0.05 percent um, a thousand volts max rated for that and it has a 10 microvolt resolution on it uh, AC accuracy is 0.7 percent and the 87 out of the 80 series is the only true RMS meter, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that the 85 and the 83 are both going to be just average RMS. Uh, the 88 might be, but I'm really not sure about it. The 88 is geared a little bit more towards automotive with a few extra features on it. For your amps range, 
your DC amperage, uh, the accuracy is going to be 0.2% with 0 0.01 microamps resolution, which is really good for a meter like this. Now, I believe that the Flukes, the 80 series, do have a little bit higher burden voltage, which can affect your accuracies on some things in electronics. So just bear that in mind if you're using this for that. Um, the diode range is a 3 volt diode range, which could be a little bit higher. You know, I'd really like to see something a little better than that. And then it's a 50 mega ohm max on the resistance range, 2% uh, accuracy with 0.1 ohm resolution. Capacitance. Capacitance is 10,000 microfarads is going to be the, the upper end of the, of the capacitance range, which on the Tektronics of uh, the DMM870 and the DMM916, which are older meters, the top end of that range is actually 40 micro 40,000 microfarads. So I do wish that Fluke would have went a little bit better on that, but for the most part, it's really good. As for the display, this is where we start getting into why I really like this meter. It's a normal 6,000 count display, which is a little bit above average of, you know, just most meters. Uh, you find a lot of 2,000 and 4,000 counts out there. So 6,000 is a little bit better, but it also comes with this high res mode that turns it into a 20,000 counts meter. And it also, if I'm not mistaken, it does bring up your update speed too a little bit more. But that's a really, really handy feature to have is to be able to use this as a four and a half digit meter. Uh, it also has the fast acting bar graph, which is 40 times a second update speed, which is really good for spotting those quick little changes in your, in your readings. Um, I don't find that I use that very often. If I'm looking for something like that, I'm probably going to go ahead and pull out a scope. The battery life on this meter if you're not using the backlight, it is claimed to be about 400 hours. I have yet to change the battery out on this. And I use this meter fairly often. So, I mean, it, it holds up pretty well on that. Now, if you do start using the backlight, there it is a two-level backlight. And it will chew up the batteries pretty quickly. The meter itself, when you're holding it in your hands, it's just a strong feeling meter. This thing, I don't ever worry about taking this out into the shop if I drop it or bump it or something like that. The holster is really, really tough. It can take a whole bunch of bumps and bruises without transferring any of that force to the meter. So, And it's also a replaceable holster, so if you tear it up, they are a little expensive. I believe they average 40 to 50 bucks online, but they are replaceable, and for a... $350 meter, I think I would go ahead and spend the money and have, have, an, have this replaced. Uh, also, it's a really good idea to put a screen protector on here. I use just cheap little cell phone screen protectors and I cut them to size and apply them on there. It's really, really worthwhile because if you've ever had to deal with a meter that has a scratched up screen, it's a big aggravation. And it's also, if you try to resell meters and they have scratched up screens on them, that's a big turnoff for a lot of people. So screen protectors are really, really cheap. It's a really great thing to put on meters. A few of the features about this meter that we kind of get into what makes this, this meter special over a lot of other meters is that it has things like the low pass filter, which the low pass filter is really good for if you take a lot of measurements on like AC motor drives, things like that, VFDs, you have to realize that although you are technically working with an AC 
current. The waveform isn't going to be perfectly sinusoidal. It's going to look like this with a bunch of little steps up and down like that. It's a really, really noisy, noisy signal. And multimeters tend to not like this. What the low pass filter is going to do is actually going to help the multimeter see a much smoother signal. It's going to make the measurements that much more accurate on it. So that's a really good thing to have, especially on an industrial multimeter that you plan on using out in the field. It also does have an actual smoothing feature that is a power on feature, which you actually have to go into the manual. I don't have any of the power on features memorized that when you turn it on in smoothing mode, it'll just kind of help to settle most of the time on that last digit. If you have a lot of jumping around on it, it'll just kind of help to, to take the edge off of that and help smooth it out a little bit, which it can be handy if you have a really jumpy little signal. A lot of the other features are going to be pretty apparent just looking at it. I mean, you've got the relative function. Now, the relative function does not work on every function of the meter. Like, for instance, capacitance. You cannot rail out on capacitance, which is actually very, very odd because other meters, um, like the Yokogawa meters, I know that they, not only is it, not it's not even actually the relative function they consider it so important they actually have a zero function for the capacitance and the resistance range so that's another little disappointing thing but a lot of my gripes on this meter are going to be really petty things honestly it is a really really great meter um it's also manual ranging over auto ranging this is a really great thing I love this feature because it gives you the benefits of both the manual and the auto if I don't know what I'm about to measure auto ranging is great it takes a little bit extra time but it's just so much simpler to be able to take your measurement and be done now if I do know I can hit this range button and find out exactly what I need. A few of the other features are the auto hold, which a lot of meters will have a hold function, but it is not a auto hold. I believe some of them may call it a touch hold, where if you're taking a measurement and you've got both probes in your hand and you're trying to hold on to this little measurement, you have to hit the hold button to actually just freeze that measurement. What auto hold does is it senses whenever you're taking a measurement and that measurement stabilizes, it will automatically freeze the measurement, which compared to your normal hold, which is basically going to be useless because if you've got your hands full, how are you going to freeze that measurement? It's a really, really handy feature to have. Um, then right here is your hertz and duty cycle, so that'll be measuring your frequency and stuff. And a really interesting about the thing about the fluke, about the 87, is that you can actually measure frequencies in DC volts mode, which is really handy. Some automotive applications, you really want to do that kind of stuff, and even a little bit for logic. But that's a lot of, that's something a lot of people don't realize that the 87s can actually do that so it may not be handy very often but it is a handy thing to know um, you have min max which will actually give you your minimum maximum and average reading over time so the longer time you take a measurement the better of an average you can get that's a really nice feature a lot of meters have min max and some of them won't have the average with it